Hey everyone, this is chapter 2 of The Secrets Beneath, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction. If you missed the first chapter, I'll have that linked in the description below. Sorry it's been so long since the last chapter, I've just been so busy, but chapter 3 will hopefully come out sooner. <laughs> also, trigger warning, small panic attack. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoy this chapter. As always, you can always find it in an archive if you just want to read. Enjoy! The Secrets Beneath, chapter 2. Adrian Agrest. The song of the chapter is Let Me Make You Proud from Tangled the Series. Cat Noir laid weak on the rubble of a burning Paris. Smoke filled his burning lungs as he gasped for air, trying to find strength just to get up. A chuckle caused him to slowly look up. <laughs> Turns out you always were just the good for nothing sidekick, huh? Despite his blurry eyes, Cat Noir knew the man in front of him. Monarch. Cat Noir didn't have any clever puns this time. He was in no mood to choke around. Shaking, not from fear, but from adrenaline, Cat Noir stood up and stood face to face with the dark, dreadful eyes that belonged to his enemy. Well, almost. Monarch was about a head taller than him, after all. This ends here, Cat Noir said through a raspy voice. Cat Noir tried to strike, but he couldn't move. What? Cat Noir tried again, but his feet were fixed to the ground. No, 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 what is happening? Monarch must have read the panic on his face, and he began to laugh. <laughs> I don't even need an Akuma. You're making this easy on me. I almost feel bad. No, no, he didn't understand. This wasn't how it was supposed to happen. Why couldn't he just move? He watched as Monarch lunged at him, and he closed his eyes to brace for impact. But nothing touched him. In fact, everything went still. When he opened his eyes again, he was in a dimly lit room, alone. Where were you, Cat Noir? Suddenly, Ladybug was in front of him. Her face was unreadable, yet sad. I, I, I needed your help. I, I know. I had to get help from Gabriel Agrest. He made eye contact with her dull eyes. I, I know, but he's here to talk to you, she said monotone. What? He blinked and his father stood in her place. His face was familiar yet horrifying, although nothing was different about him physically. Cat Noir, now Adrian, shook as he tried to control the sobs that suddenly wanted to escape his throat at the sight of him. You failed, Adrian. His voice was stern and distant. Father, I, I don't know what to say. I died because I had to save Paris when you couldn't. Adrian felt so panicked. I, I'm so sorry. I am so disappointed in you, Adrian. Suddenly, Adrian was falling. Falling and falling and falling into nothingness. And he couldn't breathe. Ladybug's words echoed around him, and then his father's even louder. But another unfamiliar voice joined in. No, he knew this voice. She's lying to you. Wake up and realize. Falling. 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 Adrian woke up in a cold sweat. He sat straight up, hyperventilating, as he grasped for something to hold onto. Clutching a pillow, Adrian tried to calm himself down. It was only a dream, after all, but he couldn't. He never could. This one had felt so real. Every nightmare he had did, but this one felt the worst. Adrian gasped for oxygen as he remembered what it felt like to be surrounded by flames in Paris, and then in a stuffy, terrible room, and then falling into nothingness. Suddenly, Plague was in front of him. Whoa, whoa, kid! Calm down, it was just a dream. Breathe! Adrian focused on his words as he found his lungs starting to remember that he was safe here in his childhood bedroom. But as he began to breathe again, hot tears swelled up in his eyes. Plague, 
how could I have been so, so, oh, he slammed his face into the pillow. I left Ladybug to fight Monarch by herself, and she had to get help from my father. My father, and, and now he's gone. Adrian threw the pillow across the room through tears. Plaque sighed and landed on his shoulder. You know, Ladybug doesn't blame you for anything. She understands that you had a personal matter. Heck, you were locked away in London by your father. There was nothing you could do. I bet my father knew it was going to happen. You know, the fight with Monarch. That's why he sent me to London. To protect me. And I hated him for it. I know, kid. Plague finished his sentence. They both sighed. This definitely wasn't the first time Adrian had woken up with regrets. You have to let it go and move on. This isn't what either of them would want. Adrian knew he was right, but he couldn't just move on. Adrian had made things a mess and left him and his father's relationship on bad terms. Though Adrian knew that what his father said in the dream was only a result of his mind trying to cope with everything, he knew his father had to be so disappointed in him. He couldn't just stand by and let that be the case. I have to make my father proud, Plag. I don't know how yet, but I will. Plag didn't respond right away. Adrian wasn't sure why, but proceeded to ignore it and check his phone. 5.34. The sun would be out soon, and along with that, the flower shop just opened a few minutes ago. Perfect. Adrian climbed out of bed and began to walk towards the window to transform when Plag stopped him. You know, kid, before anything, I'll always be proud of you. Remember that, okay? Adrian smiled. He was so lucky to have such a great Kwame. Despite the cheese addiction that caused Adrian to have to go heavy on the cologne just to cover up the smell. Thanks, Plag. Claws out. Cat Noir ran through the rooftops of Paris. An orange glow trimmed the bottom of the sky as he felt the sun begin to make its appearance. Despite his puffy eyes and sore throats, Cat Noir felt hopeful. After a quick detransformation, he stopped by the flower store and was greeted by an employee he didn't recognize. This particular flower store had been a regular stop for him throughout his years as Cat Noir. The young woman seemed to have blonde hair but wore a hood that shadowed most of her face. Odd, but he didn't think much of it. Unsure of what to get, Adrian stood in the shop awkwardly as he browsed the selection. May I make a suggestion? The employee asked softly. <laughs> that would be great, he chuckled nervously. Who are they for? Adrian hesitated. My father, for his memorial. He noticed her expression shift into um, surprise, curiosity. He couldn't tell. She smiled and motioned to something behind him. The black dahlias. He picked up a small bouquet and paid for them. He thanked the woman for her help, and as he began to leave, he stopped, curiosity getting the best of him. Why the black dahlias? he asked the woman. She smiled. Well, all flowers have meaning, right? He glanced down at the satin crimson flowers. What do these mean? He started to say, but as he looked up, the woman was nowhere to be seen. Weird. Whatever, she must have gone to the back. Her voice was almost familiar, too. Adrian shugged it off and began his walk to the park. Upon arrival, Adrian stood gazing up at the bronze statue that reflected the little bit of light the sun gave and set the flowers down at the foot of it. Don't worry, Dad. I'll make you proud. I promise. Thank you so much for listening. That concludes chapter two of The Secrets Beneath. Chapter three will hopefully be up really soon, so keep an eye out for it. And let me know what you thought of this chapter. See you next time.